guys, Chris Horrocks with AfterburnerStoves.com. Today in Southeast Idaho is the 12th day of consecutive rain showers. We've had six, eight, 12, 14 hours of rain per day, every day for the past week and a half. And so what we're gonna do today is on day 12 of rain, and it rained over 12 hours last night, we're gonna show you how to take wet deadfall that's been rain soaked for, for a week and a half, and we're gonna show you how to burn it in the Stove Tech Rocket Stove. Let's so come with me, let's check it out. So the bark, it just comes right off like wet paper. Uh, there's uh, nothing to it. And underneath, oh good, we got a little bit of sun peeking through. You can see the glistening moisture. Uh, clouds, what can you do? <laughs> Cut! <laughs> okay, so on this one here, you can see how wet it is. And uh, see that clean part of my hand? It's uh, covered in mud and moisture. It, uh, even the clean part rubs off moisture on my hand. Anyway, this all is good for, for fuel, even though it is completely drenched. And why is that, you ask? Well, let me tell you. I learned this from a, uh, a survival instructor. Uh, he came to one of my trade show booths and said, hey, uh, you know what? The, the uh, wood that you find out in the forest that after a lot of rain, it's only wet skin deep. So we're about to test whether or not this guy was telling me something true or false. He said, if you take off the bark, as a rule, you're going to have dry wood underneath. What I'm doing here is uh, using a pocket knife to just sort of shave this and take a look at what he was talking about. Okay, see, so this here is dry where I've peeled off the wet part over here. And then the end where of course it's been absorbing moisture through this cut surface is, uh, is moist. But this wood here, this is dry. So even after 12 days of rain, there's a source of dry tinder in every sop and wet stick that you find. So we can go ahead and make wood shavings out of this and then peel a few sticks far enough back to get at this particular dry wood. And then we can light our rocket stove uh, using rain soaked uh, timber. Now another question that people frequently have is, uh, is how much do you have to peel? And you don't have to peel that much and the reason is the moisture stored in this bark in that just surface area. Uh, if this were a big old log, that'd be quite a bit of, of moisture. And if I throw it on a campfire, then of course what I'm gonna end up with is a situation where uh, a lot of steam is gonna be produced, taking away a lot of heat from the fire. But what happens with the rocket stove is you have that constant draft from the hot chimney and you have a hot, hot combustion chamber and you're feeding the wood in slowly over time. And so what's happening is the heat from the combustion chamber and that draft are, are taking the moisture out of that surface as it's getting closer and closer to the fire. So even though it's going to produce a little bit more smoke and steam, um, we don't have to have a completely dry stick. <clears throat> okay, I think we're about full up on the wood shavings. Now we're switching over to these small gauge sticks. Um, some of these things are quite rubbery from the uh, rain. They don't even break. Um, the thicker ones do break after they're bent quite a ways, almost completely back on themselves before they break. So we're using, everything is wet. Um, I may be a nutcase for even attempting this. But we're going to do it. <laughs> okay, let's give it a shot. Uh, man, 
matches are going out. <clears throat> Got too much breeze. Looks like I'm getting something. There we go, a little bit. Now this is wet wood, so it's going to be difficult to keep it going. steam and smoke. Uh oh. It's looking like it's wrestling. I don't know if we're going to get this. Could have probably lit it down lower. Let's get these wet sticks in here. Let's start heating up. Whew, it's extra stinky. Extra. It's got more of that uh, wet wood smell or you know, unburnt, smoky wood smell. And I just keep putting more kindling on there. I'm, I'm wrestling against airflow, which is why I'm blowing on it. But what I want to do is make sure I have enough thermal mass when my kindling uh, becomes embers to overcome the moisture and thermal mass of my cooking fuel and so I'm putting a bunch of material right up on top in order to start drying out and of course that's giving me more steam and smoke but you can see what I'm doing up here I'm getting this kindling that's laying on top preheating as the kindling in the chimney starts to burn and that way when it all you know, gets uh, nice red hot and active, I can shake it on down with a stick, push it on down with a stick to where it's laying against my cooking fuel, keep blowing on it until I get my fire where I want it to be and then I can cook. It's just a little bit more hard, more difficult when you have the, uh, the wet, rain wet cooking fuel, but that's, uh, you know, but you can still cook and that's, that's the point. We'll still be able to prepare a meal, uh, even though we've got this challenge. Okay, I tossed another chunk of fat wood in there, just to finish bringing it to a full blaze and dry out this extra kindling up top, these bigger sticks, so I can get them to turn into embers. Because we do need a good bed of coals to overcome the wet wood. I usually tell all my customers in the uh, trade shows that you want to start with a good bed of coals from dry kindling that you brought with you. And then you can switch to the to the wood that you find, the deadfall that's been moistened by the rain, because the sticks dry out as you feed them in. But you got to have that hot bed of coals to get her started. So we definitely want to get our kindling up top dried, and then ignited, and burned down into a bed of coals in order to get this fire really going where we want it to go. This piece of fat wood's better than the last one. It's got sticks burning up here already. Really looks like a raging inferno, actually. Yeah, this violent fire is made possible just by one piece of fat wood. It's because the fat wood, which, which the fat stands for naturally oily wood, it contains this huge amount of pitch, and uh, so it outgasses these vapors, and then the vapors burn like a gas fire. So. That's why yeah, you get like so four, much power. About inch diameter, three quarter to inch diameter sticks up up in the chimney with that fat wood vertically, uh, so they can burn, combust on down, and become the foundation of our fire. They're uh, they average eight to ten inches in length.
they've definitely cooled off the fire and uh, are producing more steam and robbing the stove of its uh, efficient airflow that it had a minute ago so that fire is quite a bit lower than it was but the goal here isn't a high raging fire right now the goal is to get that kindling ignited and, and down into a bed of coals. What I want to point out here is we're ready to cook and if I hadn't have put sticks that are too long down the chimney to allow a pot to set up top I'd be cooking already. So if you use shorter shorter pieces to feed down the chimney to create that bed of embers. Let me show you the bed of embers we're starting to develop. You can see you know there's a good bit of orange beneath and between those uh, those fuel sticks and we're gonna get more of course as the wood in the chimney burns down but again I could either pull out the wood in the chimney or I could uh, use shorter sticks so that I could put a pot up top because right now we're, uh, we're ready to cook. And we're burning wood that was sopping wet from 12 days of rain. And so uh, it's pretty good how that works. Now of course it did require us to use fat wood, two pieces, to get this fire going. And of course fat wood is available at afterburnerstoves.com and a bunch of other places online. Okay, it's been about eight, nine minutes since, uh, since you, we talked to you last. And what we want to do now, we got these two sticks, the, the ones that you've been watching throughout the video. But what we want to do now is show you, out of the spirit of thoroughness, we want to show you putting more wet sticks in here to fuel the fire and see what happens. should be able to observe that they dry out and begin to combust inside that combustion chamber. That is just lovely. Isn't that a pretty sight? Show you the flames up top. Sun's down, of course, so we're using the low lux mode on the camera, which uh, appears to be a little grainier than the daytime mode. Actually, it's just the lack of light that makes it grainy. Uh, even though the low lux mode can be a little bit grainier, it's the lower the light gets, the more graininess you see on the video. It's the same in security cameras. Yep. And the wet sticks are starting to burn already. So that's it. You just keep feeding it as you need to. And in this case, because you're using thinner sticks, you want to use thinner sticks because they're wet, you can start pre-drying them, get ahead of yourself, put a little extra fuel if you need to bring something to a boil real fast or you need to do some high heat. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's the Stove Tech Rocket Stove using rain-soaked wood. It's been rained on for 12 days. And that's a wrap. If you guys need to pick up any rocket stoves, Kelly kettles, solo stoves, or any biomass cooking apparatus or solar light bulbs, come on down to afterburnerstoves.com. We'll be happy to help you out.